Welcome to Alaska and the banks of the Kenai River in late July. The sockeye run never really came in this year, but what run was here is tailing off. The pinks are here in full force and the silvers are just starting to show up. I originally brought my GoPro along to film an average adventurous day on the river, but this day turned out to be much more than average. After I put the footage together of this single day on the river, it looked more like an old kung fu movie. It was nothing but action. That said, I decided to share some tips and tricks that I've learned about fishing for sockeye over the years. First, always exit your boat on the upstream side so you don't get ran over by the boat. That might seem like a trite tip, but after you get knocked down by the front of a boat once or twice, you'll think that that was the most important thing I shared in this whole video. The camera angle here is certainly not optimal, but I left this in because this was our first attempt on the river, and with that comes some trials and tribulations. Through the course of this footage, you can see us move in and out and up and down the river, trying to find kind of a sweet spot where you'll be hooking fish up. When you do finally hook up a fish, you want to look around, mark your spot, draw a line in the sand with your foot, see if there's a rock nearby that denotes the place that you're standing and where you're casting. Lots of times out in the water, there might be a rock or something that the current's just going around a certain way that'll hold fish. So when you find that spot, you want to make sure you mark it. Through the course of this video, you'll see where one of us leaves and then the other person comes in, takes their spot, and then when we come back, you, have, you almost always go back to your own spot. You figure that spot out and that's the place that's going to work for you. Sometimes if you get a really good spot, you might share it with someone else and show them where you are and what you're doing. On this day, we were targeting sockeye salmon and fishing for them in the same manner that you generally do. However, there were a lot of pinks in the river and we caught a lot of pinks. I would venture to guess that for every fish that you get up on the bank, you've had at least one get away. Sometimes when they get away, the hook comes back pretty violently. And so it's important to wear appropriate safety gear. Fishing for sockeye or fishing in this manner, you should always wear yeah, glasses, either safety glasses or sunglasses. Additionally, and we violated this on this day, a long sleeve shirt will prove to be pretty helpful. And a brimmed hat. We felt like we could get better fishing above the boat, so we moved about 20 yards. With this move in location, you'll see how we move up and down the bank and in and out trying to find that sweet spot again. Missed him, but watch him mock me out in the middle of the river. I can't even go to the boat and try to get my gear tied up.
<laughs> if you're fishing with a partner, confer with them frequently. Find out what they've learned. Share what you've learned. You'll both benefit. double. Everybody loves to see a double. Frequently what this means is that there's a school of fish coming up the river and so if you're taking a break on the side of the river and you see people hooking them up, it's time to quit your break and get fishing. I don't know what this is about, but you know something weird is going on. That's what I'm talking about. It looks exciting, but it's just the bottom. When I initially hook a fish, I like to bring my rod tip up high. That'll bring the fish to the surface so I can see how it was hooked. If it's foul hooked, lots of times if you give it a little slack, the fish will go ahead and get off. If it's hooked well, then go ahead and set the hook in so that you can fight them and bring them in. This fish is a dandy pink salmon. This fish is foul hooked, so I drop the tip of my rod down to take the shock absorber action out of my rod in the attempt to break the hook off. My attempt was unsuccessful, so I had to chase him down river. After I managed to get that fish off, 
I made one cast from my old spot and got this dandy pink salmon. Sometimes it's nice to share your ideas about your secret little spot with someone else. A little pro tip, after you give someone else advice if you can hook up a fish on the first cast, you'll look like you know what you're doing. And if that doesn't work, get one on the next cast. Remember when I talked about long sleeve shirts? Yeah, that's it. Never, ever set your rod down when you're not holding on to the line. I once watched a guy lose a $400 rod because he set his rod down, turned around, and the fish took rod, reel, and everything out into the water. She's whacking them. This one's a sockeye. I'll keep him.
One of the keys to landing hard fighting fish is to keep your rod tip up high. If your rod tip's up relatively high, then when the fish shakes its head or starts to make a run, that force is absorbed in the rod itself. As opposed to if you had your rod tip down further, that shock would be directly on the line and the hook, and the hook would tear out or your line would break. So you want to keep your rod tip up high enough so you got a big shock absorber going out there. This great fighting fish is a big male sockeye, nicest fish of the day. You can see the fish just cruising up there. Before the day was done, we moved down river to fish another one of my favorite spots. This proved to be a good place to go back the beginning and talk about the basics of sockeye fishing. Sockeye generally travel up the river in 18 to 30 inches of water. If you're fishing shallower or deeper than that, frequently you're just wasting your time. When they travel up the river, they are right on the bottom of the river. If your tackle is not down on the bottom, you will not catch fish. There are several different strategies that you implore to keep your tackle on the bottom. The first is weights. You want to make sure you have the proper amount of weight on so that when you cast approximately 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock upriver, that by about 1 o'clock your tackle is tapping on the bottom of the river. You should be able to feel that. I think that about the third time you feel it hit the bottom, you should pull it out in a downstream motion. The second important concept is how much leader is below your weights. I will move my weights up and down my leader a little bit to kind of fine tune that so that it stays down on the bottom. The next one is where do you cast? If you cast at 11 o'clock, thinking about when you're looking out on the river, straight out is 12 o'clock. So you're casting upriver just a little bit. And let's say that your line hits the bottom at 12 o'clock. You did not really want it to hit until at least one o'clock, so you've cast either too far upriver or you have too much weight on. So you need to adjust one of those two items. Finally, I keep my rod tip down just right at the surface of the water or below the water and try to get a full, even, downstream stroke. What you're really trying to do is clothesline those fish as they're coming through. I really try to concentrate on the first several casts of a fishing trip. This helps to train my body to cast correctly. If you don't do that, you will develop bad habits that will be hard to break.
I can guarantee you, not every day on the river is going to be like this day was. Happy fishing, and we'll see you on the river. So we have one silver and one sockeye salmon. You can see the color difference. We're gonna do a little comparison. 